Hello and welcome to the outside of my studio on this really bright sunny day uh, here in the UK. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now to get this picture I've used just the sun for illumination but boosted the exposure with a mirror. This has allowed me to use a very small aperture to give a relatively large depth of field. Now together with a small amount of post-production makes a good study of the Astromeria Inca. OK, so how was it done? Well, as you can see, I have uh, the uh, plant here uh, set up on this uh, trestle just to give it a bit of height. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, place a tripod about here somewhere so that the, uh, the sunlight is actually coming from behind the plant. So the sunlight is coming in this direction and I'm going to place the camera about here. Here we are, this is the tripod I'm using. Uh, it's a bit heavy duty, uh, but that's not a bad thing, uh, which will give you quite a lot of control. Uh, I like to use this type of tripod that has a uh, geared centre column, which gives you a lot of control of the height. Uh, and also, this has a full geared head. Uh, so I have, again, lots of fine control over pointing the camera in the right position. Now for the camera, I'm using this uh, DSLR uh, with a 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 zoom lens uh, on the front of it. Uh, now I've previously set this up so that it's at uh, a sensitivity of 100 ISO and uh, I'm using aperture priority automatic exposure. That means I can set the aperture and the camera will set a suitable shutter speed. OK, so let's just place this on the top of the tripod and we'll frame up the shot. So to frame up the shot I'm just going to wind the centre column up a little on the uh, tripod here, uh, initially somewhere around there. I'll zoom the lens in. So it's at its full 70mm now. Uh, we'll just focus that up. Now the first thing I notice when I come to focus this is that I'm right on the very edge of the close focusing distance uh, and I'd actually like to get a bit closer to the subject. So uh, at this distance then um, I'm not filling the frame the way that I want to so I need to be able to uh, get the whole thing a bit closer. So in order to be able to do that what I'm going to do is use this extension tube. Now these are very useful accessories uh, and they are very simple. They're basically just a, a mechanical way of moving the lens uh, a little bit further forwards. Uh, this particular one uh, has all the electrical connections which will allow me to still use uh, the automatic functions on the camera. So let's just put that in place. There we go. So now, with that in place, uh, what I can do is just move the camera a little bit further forwards, like so, and we'll recompose uh, the image in the viewfinder. So looking through the viewfinder then, first thing I'm going to do is just focus that up a bit. About there, I think. Uh, I might actually just adjust the... Uh, the zoom on the lens. Uh, so I'm just going to go from 70 to maybe about 60, something like that. That looks a bit better. Uh, and then obviously just refocus that. There. OK, so with that set, just using the automatic function on the camera, I can see that at an aperture of uh, 2.8, uh, at 100 ISO, um, with the amount of sunshine we've got, I can use a shutter speed of a thousandth of a second. Uh, so we'll just grab an image and just see what that looks like. There you go. It's OK. Nothing to uh, write home about, I don't think. But what I actually want is a much, much bigger depth of field. So I can make use of all this sunshine uh, and uh, set an aperture uh, which is much, much smaller, which will give me a much larger depth of field. So I'm going to wind that uh, down to um, 22. Let's go for the whole 22. So that's an f2.8 
number of 22. So I'll just check the exposure again. Now this time it's telling me that uh, it's going to shoot at a fifteenth of a second. Uh, now we are getting a, a small amount of movement due to the wind. So even with those settings, um, there is a, still a chance of uh, a subject shake. It won't be camera shake because the camera is fairly securely located on this tripod. Um, so I need to be able to increase the exposure um, on, the, uh, on the plant. Now I could wind up the ISO, um, that would be one thing, um, or I could uh, use a uh, larger aperture which would give me a smaller depth of field, but I want a large depth of field. So what else could I do? Well one answer might be to use a reflector. I've got here a piece of white card, uh, so I can put the white card fairly close to the subject, recycling some of the sunshine back into the uh, flowers again. This will also give me a different look to the image. So with that white card in place, I'll just grab another image. Well, okay, that's improved things a little bit. It's gone up from a fifteenth of a second to a twentieth of a second, and the image quality has improved a little as well, I think. But we can go further. So instead of using a white card, I'm going to use a mirror. Now if I place the mirror about here somewhere, you can see that the reflection uh, is making the, uh, the whole of the plant much, much brighter. So just holding that there, I'll just check that in the viewfinder. The meter in the camera is advising a shutter speed of a thirtieth of a second, which is much better than the fifteenth that we started with. And the whole look of the image, I think, has got uh, considerably better. There we are, so I'll just grab an image like that. And maybe just move the mirror around, give me a bit of variation. There we are, it's looking quite good. There we go. So, with those images um, captured, uh, I just want one last image that I might use in post-production. And that would be just to take the whole of the, the rest of the uh, uh, bunch out of focus. So I'm just going to adjust the focus, looking through the viewfinder. I'm just going to make that all considerably softer, just like that. So with that adjustment made, I'll just grab that image. So with that now complete, the next stage would be to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop. And I've already loaded up um, some of the variants of the pictures that we took outside. Uh, so for instance, uh, this one at the end is the very last one that we took, uh, which was done out of focus on purpose. Uh, and then I have uh, various different mirror positions. So there's this one, and this one, and this one. And I think it's this one that I'm going to go forward with. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is just make a stack of these two images. So, going to File, coming down to Scripts, going down to Load Files into Stack. I'm going to ask it to add the open files. Now, I actually only want the last two here. So this one I can remove, and this one I can remove. So with that done, I'll just click on OK. There we go, and Photoshop has made me uh, this stack of these two layers with an image on each layer. So that's the in-focus one, and that's the out-of-focus one. So the next thing to do would be to line up these two images. Now there's lots of different ways to do this, um, but one of the simplest is just to change the opacity on the top layer here to about 50%. That will allow you to see through it to the layer which is underneath. Now the layer that's underneath is the out of focus one. Uh, so if I just turn that off for a second, that's the uh, layer which is underneath, and that is the layer which is on top. You can see from that that the 
focused version is actually quite a lot bigger, quite a lot larger. So what I'm going to do is just reduce its size a bit by going to Edit and coming down to Transform and Scale uh, and then just moving the anchor points in like so and visually just trying to find an area where it matches up. You don't have to be uh, particularly accurate with this. You just need to be in the same sort of ballpark, really. If you want to make fine movements, just use the arrows keys on the keyboard, uh, which will just move the picture across uh, literally one pixel at a time. There. I think somewhere around there is about right. So with that done, I'll just click on OK. Right, so with these um, lined up, what I'm going to do now is just change this back to 100%, um, like so. So now you can see the extent uh, on the lines on the edge here uh, that I've changed the in-focus one to match the out-of-focus one. OK. So next thing I'm going to do is just add a layer mask to this. So just click on the layer mask icon at the bottom here. And um, I'm going to actually invert that to hide all of it, like so. So that's made the whole of the mask black. So just going over here and making sure that the foreground colour is white. I'll pick a paintbrush and basically just paint in the sharp bits. You can just go around the edges if you wish, just with a relatively small brush. So I want to leave a small amount of fringing uh, because I think it adds to the effect. Now obviously I've just gone round the edge here, uh, so to fill in all the various bits in the middle, the easiest thing to do is just turn off the bottom layer, uh, and then you can see where you've actually gone. Uh, so I can just fill these bits in now, like this. And also when you're on this, it's easy to see the edges that you may have just slightly missed. So just go back over those and clean up any parts that you want to, like this bit over here for instance. Uh, the bit at the very back I don't actually want, so I can just go back to black, because don't forget I'm just painting on the mask, and I can just take these bits off, like that. OK, so with that done, I can just put the uh, visibility back on for the rest of it. And that is what we've got, which I think has uh, turned out very well. Uh, you might find that there are some weird artefacts around the edges, uh, and you can just go along uh, and blend those in a bit better. Uh, if I just make this brush quite a bit bigger, there, let's get rid of that, that, that's looking much better. Excellent. So I think that's worked uh, reasonably well. Um, I'd just like to take this background down a little, uh, so not forgetting that the um, one at the back here, this is the uh, out of focus version, so this is the one that I want to take down a bit, so I'm just going to select that, uh, then just go up to Image, Adjustments, go to Levels, uh, and we'll just change uh, these levels a little, and just take that down, just to make it a bit darker, uh, and perhaps a little more contrasty, somewhere around there. Again, you can always use the preview key uh, just to see what you've done. Might take that a bit.
bit more. There we go. There we are. Click on OK. Yes, I think that's coming along quite nicely. So finally, uh, I'm just going to uh, pick a crop. And as always, I'm using 16 by 9. Um, and just pull those in ever so slightly, I think. Just off the edges. Something like that. Yes, I think that's worked quite well. Click on the OK to accept that. And there we have it. So this is a relatively simple way to make a striking image uh, with the minimum of equipment. This is just done with daylight uh, and the use of a, a mirror to do a spot of filling in. And all in all, I think that's turned out quite well. OK, so I hope you like watching how I made that picture. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.